Your medicine MMI station will almost certainly have a communication station. Why? Because being able to communicate effectively and clearly is such a massive part of being a doctor. In this video, we're going to cover the two most common MMI communication stations. Firstly, giving instruction stations, and secondly, describing an image station. Let's get started. The giving instruction station is all about testing your ability to simplify complex tasks into comprehensible chunks of bite-sized information. The thing is, you could be the best doctor in the world, but if you can't clearly communicate your plans to the patients, they're not going to follow them and they're not going to get any better. Because of this, I think it's one of the most important skills a doctor can have. Giving instruction stations are going to revolve around you explaining a particular method or series of steps that need to be undertaken. You're usually instructing the interviewer, but sometimes this could be an actor too. Your station might be teaching someone how to wrap a present in wrapping paper. A classic example is teaching someone how to tie their shoes with no props or hand gestures. Or giving directions to someone who isn't allowed to look at your map. The things or tasks you'll need to explain can cover a wide range of things, so I wouldn't prepare for anyone in particular. What you need to do is develop the skill set to approach any of these examples. After introducing yourself, your first step should always be to outline your aims to the interviewer or actor. Hi, my name is Ollie, and I'm going to give you directions to drive from point A to point B. Are you ready to start? This makes your intentions clear to the interviewer. This means even if you don't get to finish within the station's time limit, they'll know what your goal was. Following this, your first few instructions should communicate the bigger picture to the interviewer. Try to describe a bird's eye view of the task you've been asked to communicate. The route is generally going to take you in an east to west direction and covers about 10 kilometers. You're going to start in an urban area and end up next to the sea. By taking a moment to describe things in broader terms, the subject will have a far better understanding of the task at hand. When giving your instructions, aim for short, clear sentences. Avoid, after the first left, you want to go about 400 meters and then take the second right after the T-junction. Try to never lump two instructions into one sentence or step. Although it may be tempting to try and save time, it's far more confusing for the subject. Take everything one action at a time. Initially, take the first left you see. Next, drive about 400 meters. In doing so, you should pass a T-junction. After you've passed the T-junction, take the second right turn you see. Let the interviewer know they're welcome to interrupt you at any time and you're happy to repeat anything that they don't understand. Don't wait till the end of the station to see if the interviewer has got any questions. The chunk and check technique is after each small chunk of information, you check their understanding. Did you get all that? I know that step seems a bit confusing. Or you can even ask them to briefly repeat back to you what you just said. Would you mind repeating back to me what I just said to you in your own words? This makes sure the interviewer is taking in everything you're saying rather than just sitting in stunned silence. The more precise you can be in your instructions, the better you'll perform. For example, your next right turn will come after about 15 minutes of driving and you'll have seen the sea on your left is a step that's much easier to follow than next, you need to turn right after a bit. By being more precise, you'll reduce the margin for error. In these sorts of stations, the interviewer is often told to do the wrong thing if there's ambiguity in what you're saying. By only giving highly precise instructions, you avoid this trap and it should help you to achieve the objective quicker. An important thing to remember is that you're marked on your instruction not the results. The person you're giving instructions to may purposefully get things wrong. What? Keep your cool. Just restate your instructions in either a more precise way or from a different point of view. I'm sorry I wasn't quite clear on that point. I meant that you should stay in the left-hand lane rather than take the next left turn. Even if at the end of a tying a shoelace station the interviewer's got one shoelace wrapped around their leg, 
and the other up their nose. If you gave clear, comprehensible instructions, you'll be marked well. Now, just before we get on to the describing an image station, I want to tell you about something I think you'll find useful. It's a free online workshop I'm currently running about crafting the perfect answer to the classic question, why do you want to be a doctor? The link's in the description. Okay, so on to the describing an image station. The essence of the station is you describing an image to someone who can't see it. Although it may seem like an arbitrary challenge, it's actually incredibly relevant to working as a junior doctor. You'll often need to describe rashes, wounds, or other examination findings to colleagues who haven't seen the patient. Describing an image is also integral to interpreting medical imaging. Trying to explain what a chest x-ray shows to a senior will test exactly the same skills as this MMI communication station. There are quite a few variations of the describing an image station, but the crux of the challenge remains the same. You might be asked to describe a painting to a blind person, describe a photograph of a wound to someone over the phone, or describe an image to someone who then has to draw it from only your description. Exactly like in the giving instruction station, you want to start general when describing an image. So that would mean you'd start by saying you're looking at a photograph of a football stadium before delving into what each football fan is wearing. It's this sort of outside in approach that you want to use throughout your description. MESTPEST is my questionable acronym for remembering a systematic approach to describing an image. MESTPEST stands for medium, setting, time, people, scenery, and things. Let's work through an example image so I can show you how each heading relates to your description. You have three minutes to describe this image. Please be as accurate and specific as you can. I think describing the medium of the image that you're looking at is the perfect way to start. Is it a drawing, a painting, a photograph? A photograph of a painting. By stating the medium, you set the stage for the rest of your description. Hi, I'm Ollie, and I'm gonna be describing an image to you. To start off, I believe the image is a photograph. By setting, I mean the overall setting slash scene, seen in the image. Is it a sketched portrait, a painting of a famous battle, or a photograph from a New Year's Eve party? The idea here is to convey what the image is of in the broadest sense. The photograph is a street scene in a busy city. It's taken at roughly eye level, looking down the middle of a road with buildings on either side. Time refers to both the time of day seen in the image as well as when it may date from. You won't always be able to tell each of these things from the image, but if you can, they're worth mentioning. The photo was taken at night time. Judging from the large advertisements that clad the buildings, it was likely taken in the last 10 years. The image you're presented with may not include people, but if it does, it'll certainly be worth picking them out. By looking carefully, you can pick out a fair number of small dark figures lining the street. None are in the foreground, but I'd estimate about 25 to 30 people can be seen in the photo. Many are holding umbrellas and are wearing jackets. In the scenery section, you can flesh out the environment in a bit more detail. What can you see in the background that contributes to the image? Numerous neon signs hang from the buildings on either side of the road. Their reflections can be seen as blurs of colour in the wet road. Two skyscrapers can be made out in the gloom of the distance. The last section of mess pest is things. Here you should describe any notable things or objects you can see in the image. You can also use it to address any other items that haven't fallen under the previous categories. There are a number of cars that can be seen, some of which are parked on the edge of the street. A singular SUV stands out in the foreground as its headlights point directly into the camera. The headlight beams pick out slightly blurred droplets of rain. Just as when you're giving an interviewer instructions, it's important to check in with them as you describe an image. Just simple phrases such as, are you following along so far? Sprinkled into your description can make it a lot more human and less robotic. This is doubly important if the person you're describing it to has to draw what you're describing. 
A lot of doing well in a medicine MMI communication station is just being a normal, sociable human, which isn't always easy under the pressure of interview day. If you were giving a friend instructions on how to get somewhere or describing a photo to them, you try and give clear, simple statements and check their understanding as you went along, which is exactly what you need to do in the MMI it's just making the conscious effort to do so in such stressful circumstances. Now an MMI station that a lot of people fear is the data interpretation and calculation station, and arguably for good reason. However, in this next video, I'll show you some key strategies to turn your weakness into a certified strength.